You only have to walk around most carp lakes nowadays to see how integral spotting has become in modern day carp fishing. Nearly everyone you see will have a rod lent up against the bivvy, ready to go when they need to put that bait out into the lake. Today we've come down to Shearwater Lake near Warminster because this is one of those places where if you get it right, spotting can result in massive hits of fish. It's the reason we came here today to film this video and it is working again. So far I've put about half a bucket of bait out and it's got to the point now where I know when I'm going to get a bite. If I stop spotting, the bite stops. So I know that if I continually trickle in that bait using the spot nice and accurately, I will get the bites. And we've had about four or five fish so far and I could probably carry on that for the rest of the day. So yeah, it looks like we're in for a good day ahead. But what I'm here to talk to you about really is spotting and everyone can do it you know whether you're just into carp fishing or whether you've been doing it years everyone's got a different style but there are some key fundamentals that everyone can apply to spotting to make it easier so the first point i want to talk about is the actual hardware itself and that means what rods and reels we're going to be using so today i've got with me the Daiwa super spod rod and a super spod reel now, the most important thing is the fact that this rod has got a five pound test curve. When you're casting fully loaded spods and spawns, they can weigh anything up to sort of six, seven, or possibly even eight ounces, depending on the mix you're, you're spotting out there. So it's absolutely essential that you've got a rod and reel that can cope with those, with that, those weights, because you will end up breaking rods if you try and get away with doing this with a standard carp rod. So yeah, absolutely essential to make sure you've got the hardware to do the job. The next thing I really want to talk to you about is the braid. Now, braid's what I've got the reel loaded up with. Today I've chosen to use X8J braid in a 26 and a half pound braking strain. That amazingly is only 0.18 diameter, so you can see it's a lot thinner than monofilament. That means it will really help me cast out, get the distances, um, but because it's so thin, I need to pair that up with a shock leader. So a 40 or 50 pound J braid shock leader is what I've got on today. And I normally wind a few turns onto the reel just so that it avoids any risk of that slipping on the cast. But yeah, that 40 or 50 pound braid, that is purely there to absorb all the force of casting that heavy weight out into the lake. The other essential thing about braid, which you'll, re which you'll realize whilst you're spotting is once the spot's all the way out in the lake, when you start to retrieve it, using braid will really help you pull that spot out of the water and it will make the retrieve a lot easier so you're not pulling it back through all the water and having all the resistance of the water. So in, in general, braid is an absolutely key part of your spotting setup. The next thing I want to talk about is when using braid, it's absolutely vital that you use some kind of protection on your finger. So a finger stall, just because with the lack of stretch and how thin it is, there is a real high risk that it can cut into your finger. So make sure you wear some kind of protective casting stalk or, or glove to make sure that that doesn't happen. Another key aspect of spotting is utilising the line clips on the reel. Spotting in general, you're trying to achieve a nice concentrated area of bait and you will not do that without the line clip. The, the line clip means you've walked your rods out or you've wrapped them around the bank sticks um, and you've cast out and it's going to stop the line at that point. So every time you know that that spot's going to land in exactly the same spot and you're going to get a nice concentrated air of bait to which you then cast on your fishing rods. So the line clip is an absolutely vital part and don't ignore it. Now that's the hardware out of the way, what I want to talk to you now about is your general approach to spotting. Now, spotting is a very repetitive thing, so you're going to have to work on a routine that works for you. I, everyone will be different. I've got my own particular things that I do, but the main point is it streamlines the whole process. What it will eventually do is turn spotting from being a chore into something that you really enjoy doing. Now, today, I've had to wade out into the lake a little bit because of the uh, trees behind me. So, as you can see, I've got a bucket set up on three bank sticks and I can adjust the height there. So it's a perfect height for me. It means I don't have to bend down. 
it means I can um, get that bait loaded up into the spod nice and easily every time and I can just concentrate on getting the bait out. I don't have to turn around, I don't have to bend down and if you're trying to put a lot of bait out over a session, believe me, these little things will make a huge difference. You've got to be comfortable with what you're doing, so make it as easy as you can. If you don't have the bank sticks, just stack some buckets up to the height you need it. Make sure you're standing on somewhere that's nice and comfortable. You're not on a, you're not on a tilt or you're not on a slant. You want it to be nice and easy to replicate and believe me, it will help you get that bait on that spot nice and accurately every time. The last thing I want to talk about, and it's something that isn't really talked about too much, is the actual loading of the spot or the spawn. Now, if you imagine you're casting at long distances, it's really important that the weight balance is, is right in there, because if it's not, it can result in the spot or the spawn really almost wobbling in flight, and you won't often get the distance you're trying to achieve. So there's a couple of really simple ways you can do this. If you're using quite a wet mix like I'm using today you don't really need to worry because the as you load the spawn up once you turn it up the right way it will all settle out nicely but if you're using what I'd call sort of more airy mixes where you've got air gaps so you, maybe like dry pellets or, or just boilies or even maggots stuff like that it's got a tendency when you first cast to move around in the spawn a bit and that can result in in the wobble in the flight so a couple of ways to get around that. One would be to just sit the spod on the surface of the water just for, just for a couple of seconds and it will take in a little bit of water and that will really help with the cast when you actually come to make the cast. It will help with the weight of the spod and it will fly out there a lot nicer than that. Also, another really, really simple thing is when you once you've loaded the spod, just grab it and give it a quick shake and it will force the, the bait to the bottom of the spawn in the perfect place for when you make the cast so that it, all the weight is balanced nice and e evenly. So hopefully you can use some of those tips to take into your own fishing and I'm sure it will help you make light work of spotting in the future.